Hello everyone, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this webinar on what we look for in a Young India Fellow. Thank you for joining us today and my name is Bhashwar and I work in the Office of Outreach and Admissions at the Young India Fellowship. I've also been a Young India Fellow in uh, the year 2018-2019 and I'm joined by my colleague Varsha who will introduce his, herself before we go ahead. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I also work with the Office of Admissions and Outreach uh, and was a fellow myself um, a while ago as part of the 2015 cohort. And I'll hand it back over to Bashwar and we'll speak to you all in some time. Thanks, Varsha. So, uh, you know, before we start off, I think uh, what is in order is uh, the agenda for the day. And this is what we have for all of you. Uh, we will take you through an overview of the Young India Fellowship Program. And uh, thereafter, there is the piece on admissions and financial aid, where we will be giving you more clarity about these different processes uh, within the application. And thereafter, the post YF pathways, which is what you make of the program where you go after the program. And I'm sure right after that, you will have a lot of questions. So we will have a dedicated segment where we address everything that we uh, feel is of immediate concern. So moving on to the overview. Now, this is the vision and model of Ashoka University. Uh, the vision is to build a world-class university in the tradition of an Ivy League institution uh, in India, providing world-class faculty to Indian students in order for them to gain both depth and breadth of education. Uh, to create the next generation of leaders for India and the world. Uh, Ashoka, of course, has a shared governance and collective philanthropy model, uh, which ensures the highest level of ethics in delivering a high quality education. Uh, the Young India Fellowship Program is the flagship program at Ashoka University and uh, predates the university being set up by, I think, three or four years. Um, even today, it remains to be one of the more important programs at the fellowship at the university and um, more on the program in a bit. So these are the kind of institutional collaborations uh, that Ashoka University has. Uh, we have collaborations with Penn, uh, with King's College London, with Wellesley, with HEC, with HEC Paris, Seamus' Sport, Duke, etc. And this is just... Uh, you know, a small set, um, indicative set, and there are quite a few more in this. Now, you would be wondering why undertake a multidisciplinary education at YIF, especially at a stage where uh, in India, especially uh, a linear sort of uh, single discipline of education and specialization is, is focused on. These are some of the things which you can keep in mind while applying to the Young India Fellowship uh, in, in the manner in which a multidisciplinary education really helps. So firstly, there is intellectual breadth and perspective to complement the depth of knowledge that you would have gained at your undergraduate level. So for instance, if you've done a degree in computer science, uh, but you, you are interested and you're curious and you would like to know more about various different disciplines, right, to build breadth of education, this is the place for you. Or if you studied history, want to know more about, say, management, uh, I think this would also be the place for you. We give you a flavor of all these different fields, around 20 different disciplines in a year, in order for you to become a more well-rounded individual to have a holistic understanding of the world around you. And uh, this is something that really helps when you go into your respective professions or if you want to become an entrepreneur and want to exercise out of the box thinking because you're aware of so many diverse fields. Then there's, of course, exposure and discovery, which comes along with the intellectual breadth that we provide. A lot of the times we find that students who have or had been passionate about something in the past uh, for certain pressures, for certain reasons, we're not able to follow up on them. This is a year of discovery as well. This is a year of exploration where you can come and get back in touch with those passions. And uh, some fellows have even gone on to build a career path 
in these creative arts or if they you know not just creative arts for instance if you're interested in any other domain and you feel um that you've lost out because of the kind of profession that you've been in or the kind of education that you had to undergo this is also the place for you to switch career paths to be able to follow your passions and uh, we have the support system for that as well and uh, more on this when we come to the post yf path and finally you know 21st century skill building uh, in the post pandemic era what are the kind of things that you would be needing to have a successful career this collaboration which i think has become more important now because we are all almost everybody is working from home or remotely uh communication becomes very important when the distance increases between people you're not working together on a daily basis there's problem solving leadership and the quality of empathy which which becomes very important uh going ahead in a in a volatile uncertain world right and to top all of that there is a lot of critical thinking that you will need to do with expanding markets with new products coming in how do you stand out uh in in a world which is uh you know becoming more and more competitive over time so critical thinking is something that that will really really help you and these are some of the things that we focus on um under the umbrella of multidisciplinary education at the yif uh, i've spoken a lot about what the yif provides you but um to get into the nitty gritties of the program it was established in 2011 um it's a one year postgraduate diploma in liberal studies and the focus like you would have realized by now is learning how to think rather than what to think and where to think right so you need to in order to be able to solve problems effectively the most major major activity is to know how to think about problems and that's something that we we focus on uh, a lot at the yif so far we've had 1900 alumni and we will be heading into our 12th year next year and uh, these alumni are now spread across 20 plus countries pursuing diverse and successful careers in the in the icons that you see below uh, you know at the bottom of the screen you will you'll see uh, you know you'll have 200 peers eight core courses to study there is a mentorship program an experiential learning module a critical writing program um eight terms six weeks each so it's a very rigorous program with four different elements four different major pillars one is the academic courses then the critical writing program the elm and the mentorship the mentorship is voluntary you may or may not want to take it up it depends upon you um and of course you know there are elements like group work creative projects academic writing case studies field studies everything that you need to become a successful professional in in your own space even if you want to pursue academia that's something that you can do right after the fellowship and plenty of people do that as creative careers academia entrepreneurship or taking up you know corporate careers or uh, work in the social sector etc so this is an overview of the young india fellowship what we provide you in the course of a year and uh, moving on to the next section and i'll request varsha to talk more about the admissions and financial aid for the young india fellowship Thank you so much. Uh before I jump right in, I wanted to uh request all of you if you have questions, please use the Q&A um that you can see at the bottom of the screen. You can type in your questions. We do have dedicated time to just answer your questions and we'll begin by addressing the ones that have already been posted. Uh so please use the Q&A button. I'm sure you've had questions as you were listening to Bashwa speak and as I will get into this. um all right so what we look for pretty simple uh we look for intellectual curiosity we look for passion and self awareness and we look for potential for impactful leadership uh now breaking that down a bit um intellectual curiosity doesn't mean just your academic background or how well you did in your school or college um it doesn't just mean how you have performed in your internship or at your workplace if you already have work experience it could mean the books that you've read uh the sort of um 
projects that you have undertaken in college or otherwise um what are your interests and hobbies all of that showcase to us what your intellectual curiosity is and again passion and self awareness pretty self explanatory will come through in the sort of activities that you've undertaken and the time that you might have dedicated towards them and uh, i think it's very important that you note the word potential here so we are not uh, necessarily saying that you need to have headed the societies you have been or founded a non profit or had a startup all of those are great uh, but we are also looking at people who uh, genuinely have an interest uh, to uh, to um explore uh, their leadership potential have uh, been in teams those are things that we look for um while this is really broad we do have some eligibility criteria and that's primarily to uh, we need our candidates um to already or are currently in their final year of undergraduate degree so you can apply if you are in your final year um and it's okay if you've done that in the past and you're currently working or taking time off uh, so our requirement is a 3 or more year um uh, undergraduate uh, degree and um, we need our candidates to be 28 years uh, or lesser when they are joining the program and we have a cut off date uh, so born or on or after uh, 1st august 1994 again um want to uh, emphasize that um based on what we look for and what our eligibility criteria is we welcome applications from all academic professional geographic social economic uh, backgrounds um and um, we can go to the next slide okay uh, so i i did speak a little bit about this already um and i'll i'll leave it for a second for all of you to just look through it um so again what we're seeing in intellectual curiosity um and if those of you have seen the application would know that our application includes asking you about your academic background uh, any other additional courses that you might have done online or offline uh, your professional experience experience which is uh, which could be a full time job it could be an internship volunteering interest books that you have read and of course our essays uh, so this is where we get that information and the essays are very important for us to kind of understand even passion and self awareness uh, um and if you have read the questions we ask you things like uh, uh what are some challenges that you might have faced and uh why you were applying to the yf right like uh uh so they really in tune to kind of understand you better as a candidate um and and we do look at your underlying values uh, value systems and how they might align to this program and what you want to be doing long term uh we can just go to the next slide okay um again um i've said that a bit but we're looking at uh we want to know your journey and some of that might be very much in those structured okay 10th where did you study 12th where did you study where did you go to college did you do a post graduate degree uh, but also you have the essays to kind of subjectively talk about your journey so far uh, what have been some milestones what have been highlights your learning um the yf application you see while we have some very uh, structured things with a certain type of answer that we might need because uh, um uh say your college or what you studied those are fixed things the essays give you a lot of room to uh kind of express yourself in the way that you want um and um uh, we really want to know how why it fits into everything you might as as you heard from bashwar you could want to do many diverse things you could come from many diverse backgrounds um but we still want to know how the why particularly fits uh so would really encourage you to think about it a little bit as you are writing your application i would always say uh open the application form register and have that on for a while or uh, read through all the questions um and spend some time there's there's enough time to finish your application now uh, uh with a lot of buffer time but uh, really start off so that you're familiar with the questions um and yeah and and uh, we're not looking at 
own like stellar profiles in every way. Uh, we're just looking up for that spark, that curiosity. Of course, you might have failed at certain things that you might have uh, wanted uh, or uh, tried uh, so far in your life, but we want to know what you've learned from that and um, really how will you utilize the YF to build your future and your vision for yourself. And uh, just, just this is just rough deadline. I mean, this is the deadlines. Your applications have been open. Uh, they've been open for a while now. Um, uh, we will share the links uh, in chat, uh, but uh, you can just access it on the website as well. Um, would uh, encourage you to look at the brochure as well. I'm sure as you uh, are a part of this conversation today, you get a good sense of what the program is but also encourage you to uh, look at the brochure start your application um we do have two rounds uh the first round ends in 15th of december Again, uh, you can look at the website to know exact timelines of when you will uh, hear back from us. Uh, but I always encourage uh, candidates to apply in the first round, not that there's a difference in selectivity, but it's just, uh, especially for those of you who are final year students, you already know by the time your final semester, um, you know, ends somewhere midway, you already know where you're going to be. Uh, those of you with work XP, uh, or currently working in jobs, you might have notice periods that you have to serve. Uh, so the first deadline would just work a bit better uh, in that regard. Uh, so for you to have a stress-free experience as you transition into the YF, I would encourage the first deadline. Again, our application is assessed uh, partially on a rolling basis. What that means is for those of you who apply much earlier, uh, say in November, uh, early November, we will be able Able to assess your application and then uh, let you know if you've been shortlisted um, and you can attempt the second stage uh, which is the writing test um, uh, before you break for Christmas and New Year's and then you can come back and interview uh, so um, yeah just just knowing getting into the holiday season knowing that uh, you're shortlisted I think uh, is, a, is a fairly good incentive to apply earlier. Um, again, uh, doesn't have any other selectivity uh, related consequences. Uh, this is just for you to know earlier. And what does our application look like? And usually I do get a lot of questions around this. So I'll jump into that if some of you um, have questions around it um, and get into it in detail. But as an overview, uh, the application form if you've opened it you know that and as I've spoken already you know it has all these diverse elements and um, then we uh, shortlist so the application is actually an elimination stage uh, so we shortlist some candidates based on that and those of you um, who uh, are shortlisted are then invited to a writing test and the personal interview uh, the personal interview and writing tests are two things that you then get uh, selected for uh, the the writing test is a timed test, so it's um, an hour, 10 minutes. Uh, you get two prompts. One is academic in nature, uh, so you will read a text and you will share uh, what your thoughts uh, around it are. You critically engage with it. Uh, the second one is a situational question. For example, um, it's a, it's a, um, uh, maybe we are at a certain stage in the pandemic where we are starting to move around, right? And, and you have to make a decision if you want to attend a friend's wedding, how would you think through that? I mean, this is not a question that you will see, uh, but I'm just telling you, this is the kind of situational questions we make sure that these are situations that you don't need to have any technical background of sorts to attempt it. Uh, it's something that's going to be relatable, uh, questions around workplace, questions uh, regarding teams and academics um, and um, of course um, what it means is we're just seeing in both the cases your basic language competency in English, YF is taught in English, so we do need to make sure that you're able to engage with the materials that we have. And uh, the second is just structure and how you think through. Um, so that's one piece and the second piece is the interview. Um, this is a personal interview that will happen over uh, Zoom. Uh, some of you will see um, uh, Bashwara 
and I um, as your panelists in the future, if you choose to apply and get shortlisted. Um, our panels are typically two members. Um, you might have a third person who will observe your interview, uh, but usually just two of us, and that would be uh, someone from the admissions team or um, a faculty member, senior leadership at the university with different offices. Um, it could be um, uh, members of the uh, YF program team, uh, including the dean. Um, and um, we also involve our alumni in this process. Uh, so um, you might, uh, one of the panelists typically would be an alum of the program from any of the batches in the past. And um, of course, uh, the uh, final stage is the decision and you'll get, uh, um, if, if you are selected, you also know the financial aid that you receive. Uh, so we have a need-based financial aid and we'll get to that in the next slide. Yeah, uh, so this is the program fee. Um, so the program fee is 9.93 lakhs and um, uh, there is a meal plan charge as well. Uh, but we do have uh, financial aid and you can get to up to 100% waiver on tuition, uh, residence and meals. Uh, do note that this is a need-based financial aid. So you will have to uh, submit um, uh, supportive documents if you wish to apply. So this is an optional stage uh, with within this process uh, where we try to understand where not us, it's a separate team uh, uh, to keep everything fair. The financial aid processing is done by a different team at the university. And so when you get the offer, you will also know if you've made uh, financial aid. And here's some data on Finate. Uh, so uh, in the current batch, we have over 52% of our candidates who are on financial aid and uh, uh, um, and uh, over 38% have more than 50% uh, waivers on the tuition fee. And the average program fee paid by fellows um, have been, uh, uh, who are on need-based financial aid is around 3.2 lakhs. So just to give you an overview, again, uh, in the chat window, we can share with you the timeline so that you have a sense of um, uh, when uh, you have to uh, apply for this if you choose to do so. Thanks, Varsha. So uh, before we jump into the Q&A, and I know there are quite a few that have come in, um, yeah. I just wanted to quickly take you through the post-YF pathways, right? So as you know, we are a decade old, in fact, a little above a decade old now. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, there are nine, 1,907 experiences to be exact. And uh, 22 plus countries where Young India Fellows are currently located. And the kind of achievements that our alumni have had over the years are truly stellar, as the numbers will tell you. Uh, we have had 60 plus entrepreneurial ventures coming out of the Young India Fellowship. So fellows during their fellowship or right after their fellowship have gone on to uh, you know, become entrepreneurs. Um, 250 plus fellows have pursued higher education in across the world in the most prestigious of institutions. Uh, we have a good support system for that as well at the Young India Fellowship. Uh, we've had civil servants, uh, Young India Fellows who graduated, cracked the UPSC, who become civil servants. We've had national award winners, uh, filmmakers mostly. Uh, we've also had uh, fellows, 70 plus in fact, who secured very prestigious scholarships and fellowships, uh, including Fulbright, etc. as you can see on your screen. So the kind of pathways that the YF opens up for you is not just in one direction. It uh, is something that is multifarious. It depends on your interest sets, what you wish to do based on uh, what you've learned at the fellowship, what breadth of education you've gained here and what depth of education you already had at your undergraduate level. Uh, no two experiences at the Young India Fellowship are the same and no two results uh, you know, in terms of the career choices that people make after the fellowship are the same, right? So, so that's just how it is. So there's infinite uh, possibilities that can come out of this uh, fellowship experience for each of you on this call right now. Um, 
if you're interested uh, in placements and higher studies, these are some uh, organizations and universities that you can look at. Uh, they hire regularly from the Young India Fellowship. So there's McKinsey, there's BCG, Google, Teach for India, Fractal, Gartner, Dr. Eddies, etc. Uh, for higher studies, universities and scholarship, you have Harvard, Oxford, uh, Berkeley, Brown, all of where our fellows have gone after they have completed the fellowship. We've also had a Rhodes Scholar in the past uh, who completed her YIF and then became a Rhodes Scholar. We've had around seven Fulbright Scholars in the last uh, decade. Uh, people have gone on to study at NUS, LSE. So the set that you can see is representative again. But a truly diverse and very, very prestigious uh, set that you can see. Uh, the kind of education that the Young India Fellowship provides uh, really caters uh, to people having such high-flying careers and uh, good academic careers as well. Now, there are some other things as well. So, of course, you can get into a job, you can do your higher studies, you can become an entrepreneur. Uh, but there are certain opportunities at the at Ashoka University uh, after the fellowship, which you can really take advantage of. One of them is the Entrepreneur in Residence program, right? So if you have an idea and you want to incubate it, you don't want to immediately you know, go into the real world and start off, uh, it's a good place to start with the incubation program at the EIR program that we have. Then there's uh, the Center for Social Impact and Philanthropy, which has the Mother Teresa Fellowship program, right? So this is for those fellows who choose to work in the social sector. Uh, you know, there's mentorship, workshopping, capacity building, and also financial support to aid you in, uh, you know, making enough money for the lack of a better term while you're also working in the social sector. One of the drawbacks of the social sector in, uh, in you know, perception is that you don't earn enough. So the Mother Teresa Fellowship also has that financial support system for you to be able to pursue what you really want to do. Uh, it's an 18-month long fellowship program. Then, of course, there's a Master of Liberal Studies program, which you can pursue as the second year right after the Young India Fellowship is over. So convert your postgraduate diploma in Liberal Studies to a full master's. Uh, it's an interdisciplinary research-focused master's program under the guidance of an Ashoka faculty member. So as you can see, uh, the kind of possibilities and the kind of pathways that open up after the fellowship are quite a lot. We have a dedicated career development office, uh, which really grooms you and guides you if you want to pursue a career. We have a high-flying faculty and a very supportive academic setup at Ashoka University and Young India Fellowship for you to be able to pursue higher studies. If you have an idea, there is enough support for that as well to, be, for, to help you become an entrepreneur. And uh, yeah, so, so that's about it. Uh, now, as you can see, the applications are open. Uh, the website address is yf.ashoka.edu.in. Uh, you can email us with your queries at yfadmissions.ashoka.edu.in. Um, yeah, and uh, you can apply to us at uh, apply.ashoka.edu.in. And I think we'll move on to the Q&A. Second. Yes, which I jumped to uh, too early. Uh, so in the next 30 minutes or so, we'll quickly go over some of the questions that we've got. Uh, we've received both on chat window and Q&A. Uh, those of you still typing out questions, please put them in the Q&A. It's easier to track them than the chat window, um, especially because I will also be sharing resources on the chat window as I answer questions. Um, I did hear a bunch of, I did see a bunch of questions around the timelines. Um, so just broad timelines, and I'm just going to share the link as well in the chat window. For those of you, who apply in the first round, uh, that would mean that you will have your personal interviews um, in the month of January and you would receive your offer letters um, around mid-February. Uh, for those of you 
who uh, apply in the second round, um, that is by the 15th uh, of March, uh, then you would receive uh, your application. Uh, you would have your personal interviews uh, mid-April to early May, and you will get your offers um, at the end of May uh, 2022. And um, I'm just sharing the process uh, and timeline link. Um, you can look at that to see the breakdown of when you will get your right test for instance and when you can apply to financial aid i see multiple questions around on what basis do we apply uh, do we get financial aid so i uh, just want to reiterate um we have a need-based financial uh, system what that means is a candidate's ability to pay is assessed based on various financial resources that is available to you as an individual as well as to your immediate family so these would include your current income savings investments um if you already have other educational loans um and and this is used to kind of uh, understand uh, the expected uh, to finance this uh, educational cost. And, um, and what we're looking to do is to bridge the gap between the cost of the program and your ability to pay. Uh, again, what I'm going to do is uh, right now, I'm just sharing the link uh, in the chat window. Um, I encourage you uh, to look at this page. Uh, this will give you a sense of uh, just the sort of documentations that's asked a lot of FAQs in this section as well uh, for you to uh, get a sense of what uh, 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 what what the finade looks like and um, uh, the question on writing test uh, like I said it's a timed test and we're looking at um, one is academic prompt and one is situational um, it's not the same questions for everyone it's a pool of questions and we randomize they're all of similar difficulty so you don't have to really worry about what you receive all of them would be of um, you know um, shouldn't shouldn't cause an issue uh, or change or disadvantage you based on what uh, particular prompt that you received um, and um, uh, just on Finade, um, those of you who have asked, is it possible to get a 100% waiver? Yes. Uh, there are individuals who are covered for tuition, residence, and meals as well. Uh, again, need-based, encourage you to look into it. Um, and um, uh, we don't have any specific consideration based on where you come from or your academic background. Yes, we do have a focus on building a diverse class, uh, but we might we will not disadvantage anyone based on uh, what academic program they've done in the past or their geographic location. Um, someone's asked what kind of essay questions would be asked in the application process. Um, I, I do still see questions coming up in the chat window, again, requesting you to put it in the Q&A section, uh, makes it much easier for me to um, uh, navigate as well as because I'm sharing these links, um, it would be tougher for others to also um, find these links if there are other messages popping up. Um, and um, uh, for those of you who have asked questions around the timelines, again, I'm not going to get into the super specifics. Please look at that link. And um, the kind of questions that we do ask in our essays, uh, these are questions like, uh, what, is, um, what is your aspiration? Tell us about what you consider significant in your journey so far. What are some of your aspirations and motivations for joining the YF? Um, what are aspects of the program that you're excited by? What really matters? to you and why. Um, so these are some of the questions. What's a challenge you've faced? How have you overcome it? What did you learn from this experience? Again, invite you to open the application, register and begin the application. There are a couple of optional essays as well um, that will help us understand your candidature if you have faced uh, um, any sort of disadvantage um, in accessing quality education. These are things that we would like to know. Uh, so do look that up and um, um, yes, uh, for those of you who have applied in the past, 
uh, there isn't um, any sort of disadvantage that you have. Uh, do note that we do have access to your past applications. So we do look for some growth if from your previous application to the current one. Uh, so especially would encourage you to not write the essays the same way, for instance. Uh, so that would be my biggest, um, I guess, a uh, tip for someone reapplying, uh, please do uh, go through that reflective process again and attempt the essays fresh. Uh, these are things that we do notice. And uh, otherwise, um, uh, I don't think uh, anything else, just given your best and uh, uh, fill in the application, giving yourself enough time to do that. And um, um, again, I see questions in the chat window. Uh, please do put it in the Q&A. Um, I think from now on, if I do see additional questions in the chat window, I will not be answering them. Um, and uh, you do not have to uh, send in a resume. The application uh, will, um, will automatically ask the sort of information that we need about your academic and professional experience. Um, and um, uh, some questions around having work X or not having work X, do we have a disadvantage or an advantage? No. Um, we do look at individuals to have had some sort of experience, be it an internship, but we're not looking at full-time work X, um, as you've seen in our eligibility criteria. Recommender details, I see that has come up a bunch of times. You do not need to submit your recommender details at the time of the application. This is something that we look at before we interview you. So for those of you who are shortlisted, this is compulsory, um, but you can go ahead and apply without the recommender details at this point. Um, uh, we cannot give you the full list of elective courses at this point. Um, uh, a lot of via faculty come from other universities, so sometimes confirmations take longer. Uh, but do know that there's a lot of electives to choose from. Uh, you will find what you're looking for. But if there's any specific course that is, um, say, a, a necessary for you, uh, necessity for you to join the program, we'll invite you to then write to the program team. You can find their email ID on the website so that you can ask specific questions about any course that you really uh, feel that you should uh, um, attend, but uh, as always, I would say YF is the whole academic experience, so I uh, would tell you to not focus on one or two programs. Uh, do look at our brochure and you'll get a sense of what some of the programs the next year will be. Um, in terms of tone of essays, just be authentic, be honest. Uh, if your authentic version is formal, that's okay. If your authentic version uh, is a little more relaxed, uh, that's okay. But uh, I expect to see no typos, grammar errors, um, uh, not um, say text lingo, uh, but otherwise um, uh, feel free, be as authentic as you would like. Um, for those of you, um, English is not your first or second language, um, that's okay, uh, but um, the courses are taught in English and there are faculty members who of course do not speak any Indian languages. So while you might have teaching assistants to support you, we do uh, require a basic uh, prerequisite um, um, uh, language competency. Uh, so um, yeah, that's something you would have to meet. Uh, so I wouldn't say if you haven't studied in English in the past, you can't come to the program, but you will have some catching up to do. And the writing test, for instance, is one way where we get to know if you are at the language level, we need you to be at the start of the program. Um, I will take one or two questions and then I'll give a couple of questions around post uh, fellowship pathways to Bashwa. Um, will there be help going through the application process? Uh, yes, we will do other sessions, some of them very focused on the application form itself. Um, and in the last few weeks, we also do um, office hours of sorts. So keep an eye out on our social media page. If you're already on our mailing list, you will get to know about these. Um, and uh, it does not matter what you, university you have studied in, um, does not matter what program you have studied as long as you meet the eligibility criteria and you're curious, passionate, self-aware. Those are things that matter.
stuff for us. Uh, Bashwar, um, I'm just going to give you uh, two questions uh, to start off with. Um, one is about uh, the MLS. Um, and uh, what does that look like? Do we have to pay fees for it? How, what is the selection? Just an overview. And the other one is an interesting question, uh, aspiring fiction writer, and uh, uh, does the YF um, help with that? Right, thanks Varsha. So I'll attempt to answer the MLS question first since it's a little simpler. So the MLS, as you know, uh, is the second year right after the Young India Fellowship, if you choose to convert your fellowship into a full master's, right? Uh, how it works is that during your tenure at the Young India Fellowship, as a fellow, you, are, you can approach Ashoka faculty who are willing to be supervisors for the MLS program. This is something that, uh, you know, in the duration of the year, you can get in touch with our program team. And they will be able to guide you with the list of professors who would be available in the current year from the different departments at Ashoka University, be that, say, computer sciences, psychology, sociology, anthropology, English, etc. And there are history and other departments as well. Right. So that's something that you can do now. If the professor sees your thesis idea uh, and really likes that and would like to be your supervisor, then you make it through to the MLS program, right? Uh, that's essentially uh, the overview of the selection process. You, you, have to, you have to really put in a lot of effort to create, to make a thesis, which, which will really, uh, you know, work for you as well as the professor. And when you get into the MLS program, the nitty of it is that you will have to be a teaching assistant on two courses. It's a research-based master. So uh, it is, the difference between a course-based master's and a research-based master's is that uh, there are no ABC courses that you have to take uh, compulsorily for you to be completing your credits. I think there are only two courses or three courses that you will need to study in this one year. Alongside that, you will have to be a teaching assistant uh, where you will be assisting a professor on his or her course, uh, you know, on two such courses. And uh, the third thing is the main chunk of your credits come from your dissertation right and you will have to work on that dissertation throughout uh, the year so that's essentially the structure of the mls program and after that uh, you know a lot of people have gone on to do their phds as well um, in 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 their subject of choice so it it really is something that prepares you for a higher research degree uh, is what the mls program does um Coming to the second question about aspiring fiction writer. Yes, so uh, these are certain intangibles that the program sort of provides you with, right? So uh, I, can give you, I can give you some stats and you know, names of people who have done exceedingly well in the field of creative writing. Uh, last year in the Commonwealth Short Story Writers uh, Competition, 20, I think it was 2020, uh, Kritika Pandey won the award. Right, so she is she is an alumni of the Young India Fellowship, and you can even catch her talking to our founder, Dr. Pramodrat Sinha, in one of the YF podcasts uh, in season one. So, and this is not this is just one person that I'm talking about. There are plenty more who have gone on to, uh, you know, write. Uh, they've published uh, books, uh, books on. So it can be prose or poetry. It can be in any language. Uh, I've known people who have written in Hindi in English. Um, and most probably there are people who have written other languages as well. Um, actually, what happens is that the critical writing program, which is there, it really helps you hone your writing style. Uh, when that happens, you gain a certain amount of confidence in terms of the ideas that you wish to express and how you would like them to come across. Right, uh, that that can be a formative block for you if if you choose to become a, a fiction writer, and of course a fiction writer must know a lot of things, right? So when you are framing a plot, uh, you should know you should have a breadth of understanding in order to be uh, you know able to execute your uh, thoughts and your story uh, in an appealing way. So that is also something that 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 does really help. So yeah, and I mean, uh, the short of it is that it does help, and uh, there is there are plenty of resources for you to access if you want to become a fiction writer. 
uh, in the near future. And uh, you can also write to us on yfadmissions at the rate of shoka.edu.in. I'd be personally very happy to connect you with some fiction writers who have, you know, uh, who are alumni of the program as well. So yeah, those are the answers. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you who asked, um, is uh, deferral uh, possible? No, um, you will have to apply the next year, uh, which also means those who applied in the past, received an offer, might have not joined for some personal reason. You can apply again. Um, and um, uh, some questions on the recommendation again. Uh, who can write your recommended letter? Um, it could be a professor. It could be your your manager, um, it could be your supervisor at your internship, um, it could be really anyone who knows you well and has seen you work closely. Uh, so do not go for, um, say, the HOD of your department if they haven't really interacted with you. We're not looking at the credentials of that person. We are really looking at um, uh, um, uh, we're really looking at uh, just just how um, well that person understands you. And um, uh, another thing to keep in mind, if you are a college student and you've worked in a society, please do not uh, make another student, say a senior uh, within that society, your recommendation letter. It has to be someone in a full-time work um, experience. Even if it's a professor who's retired, that's okay. Sometimes we have students who've had their high school school teachers um, or um, uh, principals, right? That's okay too. Again, really depends on what stage of your career you are. If you are 27, already have five years experience, maybe your high school teacher is not the best fit because we're looking at someone to give us a sense of you as a person today uh, or in the recent past. Um, uh, not family members uh, or, um, so if you um, are working in your family business, you cannot have individuals from your family write your recommendation. Uh, these are again, typical do's and don'ts of recommendation letters. We do have that on our portal. And when we require it from you, we will also again share these instructions. And um, uh, what is the rigor of the program? Can we continue part-time job? I would say no. Um, the YF is a very busy year with the experiential learning module um, and all the classes that you do. And, and again, a uh, lot of interaction time. So it's going to be really difficult uh, for us um, uh, to say that you can make this happen. So I would say ideally plan for a year where you're completely dedicating to the year at YF, especially if you're sitting for placements or applying abroad. A lot of your time also goes into that. So work will be difficult. I'm going to say once more, uh, questions in the chat window are not something that we will look at. Uh, I still see questions there. We have only 10 minutes. So I'm going to prioritize the ones in the Q&A section. Um, and um, uh, okay, uh, so Bashwar, a question for you is one, uh, what are some of the prerequisites for getting into the universities abroad, the prestigious ones that were shared in the um, application? And is there any sort of support uh, for that process? Right. So, yes, there is, in fact, uh, by the virtue of the kind of uh, tie-ups that we've had, uh, there are certain programs in these universities which have, uh, say for UPenn, there is a master's in liberal studies program, right? So, a year at the Young India Fellowship would mean that you get transferable credits uh, and you can pursue a second year at, uh, at UPenn, if, but you have to apply separately. Uh, for that. The credits, however, are transferable. That's one example. I can take the example of HEC Paris also. I think there is some application fee waiver uh, in terms of uh, there as well. Uh, then there's Siosis Po, which hosts an exchange program for our fellows. It's a six month long program. Plenty of fellows have undergone that as well. Um, then, of course, you know, so there are things which work. Oh, so there's an HBX uh, core. Uh, online, which you can undertake at a at a much much subsidized price than is uh, regularly available. So that is something that you can do as well. Uh, plenty of, I mean, I think most of you would have heard of HBX Core, and uh, as you know, it's quite prestigious. Uh, then, of course, there are 
uh, you know other universities where people have gone and that that works organically and i'll tell you how so these universities uh, you know look for a great academic record right and the fellowship is uh, this fellowship is a postgraduate diploma in liberal studies which is very well known globally as of now i mean across a decade it has been pretty well known so it does add to your academic profile as well when you say that yes you've been uh, part of the young india fellowship and thereafter you know uh, if you get references from good faculty members at ashoka university or at the young india fellowship uh, that really adds to your profile and uh, the intangibles of it is that the kind of understanding that you build across the year in the, in the fellowship really really uh, you know helps you write a quality sort of sop uh in your own domain of interest so right now if you don't know enough about a domain of interest which you're just about exploring uh the fellowship can really help you in that by the virtue of the fact that there are 20 different subjects which are taught to you in the in the course of a year um and yes so there have been full writers there have been road scholars there have been uh, you know people who've gone to oxbridge colleges or people who've gone to ivy league colleges uh gone on to do their mtech after the fellowship as well gone on to do their mba um how it helps i think is the kind of network that it provides you the fellowship provides you with a very solid network of people that you can really really reach out to as you know our alumni are based in 22 plus countries now and across various different prestigious institutions and most of them are extremely accessible so if you wish to reach out to them uh they are only you know an email away or a call away so so that's it, essentially how strong this network is that's essentially how it helps you in your higher education as well um um i think we will eventually take an additional 5 minutes or so um just because i see that there are still a lot of questions in the q and a um uh window um what kind of courses do we talk about in the additional courses section in the application uh this would be any language courses that you might have done offline um maybe some of you have uh, uh degrees in art say for instance in dance or in music um your trinity examinations in a particular music instrument it could be online courses that you might have done on platforms like ashoka x edx coursera uh so this is a kind kind of what we really look at as additional courses um and a lot of questions um around the non academic sections so here we are looking at um uh personal practice volunteering uh things that you uh one award for um in in competitive sports um you do not need to provide any attachments uh, or any a uh, sort of proof we're going to trust what you say uh just make sure you're giving that one two three lines about the program very clearly uh about what you've done very clearly and that's what we look for of course if you are shortlisted and you're in the interview we might ask you additional details we do understand that you wouldn't have certificate for or personal practice for something that you say cycle for the last 5 years but we still would expect you to be able to engage with it so that's something to keep in mind um that anything you put in your application around uh, non academic activities uh we might ask you questions on it so be truthful and um uh, just um uh it's okay to not have say five activities it's okay to have fewer uh, but just be very honest in what you share uh um uh, again uh, someone asked about the books um uh, what kind of books uh, should you put books that have had an impact on you need not be the last five books that you've read uh, but it must be books that you've read uh, it sometimes does become questions that uh, we ask um and um, for those of you who have asked how does the interview play out it's more of a conversation uh, we really do start off from the application that you've submitted usually there are are a hundred interesting things that we would like to ask based on what you've written in your application we pick a few and we begin with that um the conversation is typically anywhere between 30 minutes um uh to 45 minutes usually sometimes lesser sometimes longer additional or lesser time does not mean anything in terms of your candidature sometimes you're super convinced in 10 minutes and you would have 
a 10 minute interview. Uh, sometimes we just love what we are what we are speaking about and we, we don't want to let go of the conversation and it might go on to an hour. Uh, so um, yeah, um, it, it really is open-ended, but we do start off with things in your application. Uh, we're not going to test you on um, random trivia. Uh, that's not related to your interest areas or your academic or professional background. So nothing too much to stress. It's not a stress interview. Uh, it is a conversation. And um, 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 one sec. Um, there are again questions on, is there a merit scholarship? No, the via financial aid is need based. Um, so those of you who are asking, will the class of 2023 be offline or online? Um, we would be on campus. That is the hope. And that's what we will work towards. We already have uh, around 90 plus students of the current batch already on campus. Of course, this is not completely in our control. Um, it depends on what uh, the Haryana government, what uh, the UGC guidelines are at that point, uh, what does infection rates look like when you begin classes in, um, uh, you know, next year, um, uh, what happens to our vaccines after um, that many months. So many, many variables, uh, but uh, we are working under the assumption that it will be offline. And if it is online, uh, we have built capacity in the past two years uh, to really deliver high quality education to you. Um, and uh, for those of you, uh, okay, another question, where should your internships be in your application? Internships are in professional engagement. Uh, volunteering should be non-academic activities and engagement. So hope that clarifies. Again, um, sometimes you might make a mistake and put the wrong information in another bucket and that's okay. Uh, we still read all of it and um, process it the way we would uh, want to. Uh, so don't worry about it, but do read the help text and the instructions. We've tried as much to be very clear. Um, and um, we require only one LOR. That's one question that we've uh, received. Um, I cannot share how selective is the program, but it is quite selective and it's a class of 200. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, how many days does it take to finish the application, including the essay? That's that's really tough for me to say. Um, I would say the bits that do take the most time or what I would like you to take the most time with is the essays. Um, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. If you already have your transcripts at hand and you know what your scores are and you just need to fill that into a window, or write a few lines about um, your uh, internships. These are pretty straightforward, uh, should not take you more than a couple of hours. The essays, I would say, spend a little bit time thinking about it. The actual writing can take lesser time. Um, and um, uh, how much time can one expect to hear back from the admissions team? Again, do look at the timelines that I've shared in the chat window. And um, and some of you have asked, you've written detailed answers. Is that a problem? No, we do not mind that. We will read it. Uh, but where you can be, uh, um, don't look at it as the more words you write, it's a better essay. That's not always true. Um, so just answer to the question. Um, stop when you feel you have authentically and fully answered um, in the way you wanted to. And um, um, some questions, yeah, so for some of you did ask uh, if you've applied in the past and um, your answer more or less remains the same. For instance, what matters the most to you? I don't expect that to change year to year, for instance, and that's okay. Uh, I would still um, uh, advise you against copying, pasting that same answer. Please write that fresh and then um, the nuance and uh, what the past year, maybe you've changed a bit in your thought process, all of that will come through. Uh, so do still write out the answer again and of course I don't expect radical changes in some of those things maybe why you want the YF will largely be the same too for many of you um, if you don't get selected in the first round you cannot apply in the second round you're of course welcome to apply to the next year's cohort um, and um, uh, tips to get selected I think all of what we have spoken uh, today um, is, is uh, things that we look for and um, um, 
Uh, there is one bash where I think you might be best to answer if someone is feeling a bit underconfident with the online writing test. Um, is there anything that they can do in terms of preparation uh, towards it? I think the, the best way to prepare for the online writing test is to prep yourself to read uh, on the screen, basically. You know, because you will have a set sort of time in which you will have to read a passage, comprehend it, and then analyze it. Essentially, that is the format of the test. And it's an unseen comprehension, right? So if you wish to uh, prepare in any way for this online writing test, just read small paragraphs or, um, in fact, yeah. So read small paragraphs uh, online and try to analyze them within a certain time, within a certain time period that you set for yourself, right? Uh, that's a good practice that you can assume for, for using the online writing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had an interesting question. Someone in humanities wanting to switch to technical side. Will the YF help them? That is a difficult one to say. Now, it, it's completely up to your aptitude. For instance, uh, you don't need to be studying computer sciences to become a coder in today's time and age, right? Uh, but what exactly would your interest be in the computer in computer sciences? That's something that you will have to. Uh, really gauge for yourself. Now, see, I come from a humanities background. If I want to get into machine learning now, uh, you know, that's a very difficult proposition. But simpler things, yes, of course, I can pick up. So whatever it is that is, you know, available as a resource for you to, uh, you know, get a hold of at Ashoka University, I think you have the entire year to explore. And there is a very robust computer sciences department as well at Ashoka University, which you can really, really uh, you know, access and uh, talk to the professors there and see what you can work on. So it depends on your capability, your aptitude and what you already know and what you wish to know. Uh, I think that's, I, I won't say it's not possible, but I would say that it is possible depending on these few variables that are there. And that's person specific. Yeah, thanks, Bashwa. Um, another question is, what is your suggestions for a professional with considerable experience studying with the batch? With almost nil experience, that's not true. Uh, just, just that's factually wrong. Um, we do have a diverse mix. But yes, if you could pick that if you're on the higher end of the work experience, closer to 27, 28, um, how does that look like in a class that um, on an average is younger than you? Right, so... See, when I came into the fellowship, I was around 26 years old. So I would have been one of the older ones. But what I realized is that uh, with a certain kind of work experience, with a certain kind of education, one tends to get set in their ways, right? So if you work three, four years in a certain industry, uh, the way that you think becomes a little set towards that industry. What it really helped uh, when I interacted with, say, uh, people who had just graduated or work for a year or something in a very different field is that it helped break my mindset to see how different industries work. I think uh, one of the main qualities, as Varsha has already told you uh, in the course of this webinar, is uh, intellectual curiosity. That also means that you come in with an open mindset, a mindset that is open towards learning, uh, flexible towards absorbing various different uh, facets of education. And one of the biggest facets of education at the Young India Fellowship is peer learning. Um, so whether it be someone who's 28 years old with seven years of experience or whether it be someone who is say 20 years old with zero years of experience, um, I think these interactions that you have uh, with different people, gauging their different interests, learning from them, it actually helps you grow as a professional. It has helped me grow as a professional as well. I can tell you that much uh, because I am doing things now which I had never done in the past. Um, I came from a very different background. Uh, then I did the fellowship. And now what I do is radically different. I learned all of what I do at the fellowship. Um, and I found it really interesting. Uh, so I hope the same works out for you as well. 
Uh, I'm just going to take a last few very quick answer questions. Um, so for those of you who are asking about, uh, say, what if your university gives you lesser CGPA, that doesn't matter. We do understand across universities, across uh, disciplines and courses, uh, what is a good score and what is a bad score um, would vary uh, heavily. Uh, so we do have a sense of um, uh, a lot of universities and how they score. Um, so don't worry about that too much. Um, and so even if you do, um, and, and of course, uh, in the descriptions, wherever you can choose to add that you are ranked well uh, with respect to the rest of your class. So we get a sense of uh, where you where you stand and that would be good enough for us. Um, those of you are asking, do you need to stick to the word limit for the essays? Not necessarily, uh, but we have given that as an indication based on what we think is enough number of words, for instance, to express that particular answer. Uh, so do look that as a broad guideline and try to stick to it. Uh, but of course, slightly longer essays, much shorter, slightly shorter essays, none of that uh, are really uh, going to affect you uh, negatively. I do understand that there are certain questions that we have not answered. And those are largely when someone's asked, this is my long-term particular interest and how does the why have help and we took a few of those but we can't take it for every profession uh, but do know that uh, we do have alumni in most of these fields that i did see in the q a window uh, so um what I would suggest is uh, say if there are organizations or academic institutions that you are looking to move to after the fellowship, a search you would find YF alums there. Most times YF alums are very responsive um, and so you can reach out to them directly. If you want us to facilitate a conversation, you can write, email us and we can see what is possible. Uh, but um, yeah, and, and I would really encourage you to listen to the Season one of the YF podcast, Bashwa can add more about it, but it really does focus on pathways uh, of alumni. So um, you get a larger sense of really where do alumni go. And it's not just us as individuals from the admissions team telling you all this is possible, but for you to really see that it really is possible. We do have a lot more sessions lined up all the way till um, uh, the end of our cycle. Uh, so do join in some of them are more focused on certain aspects say the program or the finite uh, so those are sessions to attend if your questions are super specific about that most things are already answered in our brochure and website really encourage you to look through that i did skip some basic questions that we had on how long is the yf program for instance those are things that i would encourage you to search on your own i really hope some of you do uh, apply to the program and we get to see you all in person some of you at the interviews i'll just let bashwa just know about uh, tell you about what some of the future sessions are and how you can uh, engage with the resources already out there and then close the session for us thanks Varsha. so for all of you present on the call we will be having uh, dedicated application walkthroughs you can get uh, a hang of the kind of curriculum that we have there will be interactive sessions with alumni as well. Uh, these are just to say some of the sessions that we have lined up for all of you uh, in the coming months, uh, this month, as well as November and December when uh, round one ends. Uh, I would highly encourage you all uh, to, you know, you all have uh, smartphones or iPhones. So you can all, you know, go on Spotify, listen to the YF podcast. We are available on seven or eight different platforms, including Google Music, Amazon Music as well. Um, so that the YF podcast season one will really, really help you uh, to understand alumni journeys, to see the kind of prospects that you may also have if you join the program. Um, apart from that, you know, there are plenty of video resources on our YouTube channel, uh, which you can get a hold of and uh, see, you know, what we are looking for in the application process, etc. Some of you who would have already applied to the program in uh, earlier years know that it's a quite it's a very rigorous process and uh, you know so so you will have to really really prepare for that admissions are on a rolling basis so do apply early to get your candidature assessed early um that's something that we have for round one which is the early decision deadline so get your results early in order for in order to plan your year ahead better 
So those are some things that I would say. You can go to apply.ashoka.edu.in if you haven't started applying yet. Um, if you need more information about the kind of program that we have, the structure, etc., uh, the brochure, if you need to download that for yourself, you can go to yif.ashoka.edu.in. And um, so, yeah, I think that's about it from our end today. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And um, see you soon again. Thank you. And have a good day. Thank you, everyone.